take a car and have a look at some of Australia's best fishing spots. I don't know what they ask me. I've never understood fishing. Rods and tackle and bait. And then I had this really strange idea. And I thought, I wonder if they can use a car as bait. And then I thought, I wonder if a shark could eat a car. This is not as stupid as it sounds. Sharks are renowned for swallowing all sorts of things and have, on occasion, coughed up various car parts, including old tyres and even number plates. Exactly how number plates fit into the food chain, I don't know, but I want to find out. This is Port Lincoln, where fishermen are so tough they smoke bluefin tuna like cigars and great white sharks grow to the size of a Ford Fairlane. If we're looking for a place to find a shark to eat a car, this is it. Now, the idea is for a shark to eat a car and not me, so I need to talk to the professionals. So this is what I want to do. Here's the mini moak, and here's me sitting in it, like that. And then I want to build a cage and cover it with mesh so I don't get eaten, like that, and hook it up to a chain or a cable, and then drop the whole thing into the ocean among a pack of hungry great white sharks. So, two things. One, can it be done? And two, how are we going to do it? Yeah, we can come up with a concept that'll work, I think. This is the sort of thing we get to do at Top Gear Australia because we have some of the world's deadliest creatures. I'm about to go deep sea driving with a whole bunch of great white sharks. For our UK colleagues, however, the closest thing they'll ever get to do to this is maybe come face to face with an angry catfish at the mouth of the Thames. Driving around town in the world's safest moak is all well and good, but the perils of my adventure are starting to sink in. There's a saying that you never actually see great white sharks arrive. They just appear. I'm starting to get cold feet, but nothing can stop this now. If I don't go through with this idea, then I'll be the laughing stock of Port Lincoln. 70 kilometres from the mainland, the Neptune Islands. Home to a few thousand New Zealand fur seals and three and a half hours to the nearest hospital. As we lay anchor, no one's sure how the sharks will react to a lime green moak parked in their dining room. They'll do one of three things. Look at the car and take off, hang around and check it out, or go crazy and tear the cage in the car to pieces. I'm hoping for either of the first two options. Our poor little moak, I was only driving that around yesterday. Gone to Davy Jones' lot, that poor little thing. Well, we'll soon find out. Will a shark choke on a moak? Wish me luck. This is one of the hairiest moments. The idea here is to drop into the driver's seat as quickly as possible. Great whites can easily leap out of the water and take a seal from a rock, so there's no reason one couldn't suddenly take me. OK, I'm behind the wheel and ready for any oncoming traffic. Check a few instruments, and typically the wipers have decided to pack it in. All I can do now is wait. The moak somehow seems smaller than it did on land and harder to handle. The bonnet either points skyward or towards the murky blue below. There goes one of the free-swimming locals who's either braver or more stupid than me. And then from nowhere, my first visitor materialises and I suddenly wish I'd worn my brown wetsuit. This is the Kenworth truck of the fish world. The sheer size of this fish is gobsmacking. It's way bigger than the moke. 
There's no doubt who has the right of way here, and I know who'd win a head-on collision. Once the shark has made its presence felt, it just disappears. Maybe lime green puts you off your appetite. Or did it once have a warranty problem with the Leyland Marina? At this point in time, the sharks don't seem to be terribly interested in the moak. So um, we've been trying tuna and all sorts of things to attract them to the car, but uh, just not working. So now I'm going to deploy my secret weapon, the sausages and the leg of lamb. It's just occurred to me, I'm sitting here as the first Meals on Wheels franchise in the Great Southern Ocean. There are sharks out here somewhere, and now it's time to ring the dinner bell. Now, I don't know anyone who wouldn't go after a few snags and a leg of lamb, particularly when it's washed down with a full-bodied red. But now I can't see, and I'm starting to panic. What if the shark hits the moat and the car separates from the cage? 